it's been around for 10 years. So, you know, it's, it's had some movement, but I think we still have a couple more decades and everything that's happening in the fiscal and monetary stimulus arena is, is just unambiguously very good for cryptocurrency pricing. And, and so it's a, it's a really exciting time to invest in the space. Well, I think it's massively inflationary for things that can't be quantitatively eased. And I think that's where some people get confused. Uh, most of the, the uh, items in the CPI basket can be eased, right? It's mainly consumer goods and you know flat screen TVs and things like that. And you can make as many flat screen TVs as you want. So CPI inflation is probably not gonna do very much. But inflation in things with, that can't be eased, like gold or Bitcoin, or even shares of the S&P 500, those are all going up because the amount of paper money floating around with which you can buy things like that is going up at an unprecedented rate. We've had some V-shaped recoveries in the past where something bad happened, 9-11 uh, being an example where a really bad thing happened, everything shut down for three days. But then in most cases, people could get back to business and get going. This is both a barrier to economic activity. You know, it's an invisible little thing that's preventing people from going into uh, businesses. But it's also a psychological shock. You know, there's a lot of trauma out there. People are gonna be very slow. Uh, I got a um, inbound email uh, from Fandango offering me five bucks off a movie ticket. I'm like, it's gonna take a little more than five bucks to get most people back in the movie theater, right? So um, those will persist for a very long time. And one of my main yardsticks for when this thing's gonna uh, start uh, getting back to normal and the economic impacts is getting schools open. And in the US, 40% of households have a child under 18. It's really difficult. If uh, a parent is homeschooling a couple of kids, they're not able to work very well. And we've seen statistics from the BLS that women have left the workforce at a, at a rate of four times as fast as men because they're um, bearing the brunt of homeschooling their kids. So until uh, schools are open, I just don't think the economy can really function. As we transition to you know, more fiscal stimulus, more monetary stimulus, you know, the results are gonna be slow to, to be seen. And I think the economy is going to be very slow to grow out of this. In the 2008-9 um, global recession, it took uh, about two and a half years to regain the GDP output we had prior to the crisis. And unfortunately, I think this is a bigger, deeper, stranger crisis. And so I think it's going to take quite some time to regain all the economic activity. In the last three years, so many projects have gone live. So much more has been built on the technology side. Uh, we touched on the global macro case for you know massive paper money printing has to be good for fixed quantity assets uh, and then another huge development is just the ease in which uh, hundreds of millions of people now can buy crypto uh, as you remember in 2017 it was really hard to buy crypto you know you have to take a selfie with your passport and send it in wait for a week you know the website crashes you know and then you buy a few bitcoin uh, now we have firms like paypal and square that make it you know, instantaneous for people to get access to crypto. So I think there's so much different uh, at this rally, which is coincidentally at the same price it peaked out last time. In the early days, obviously it was, it was you know, just uh, cybersecurity experts that were interested in Bitcoin. Now you're seeing, you know, larger firms bringing on uh, investments to Bitcoin. And then you're starting to see, you know, obviously some famous global macro investors investing. Uh, and then I think over the next you know, two or three years, you're going to see pensions, endowments, you know, really broaden out the institutional uh, purchase of crypto assets. The simplest way to think about it is literally Econ 101 supply and demand graphs. You know, you have a supply graph that I think is very inelastic, very vertical. Um, it takes much higher prices to pry, you know, Bitcoin out of people's hands. The Bitcoin money supply formula is fixed, so it doesn't matter what the price is. You're still going to get six and a quarter Bitcoin every 10 minutes. And then I think the demand curve is actually the opposite. It's pretty flat, you know, it's basically price insensitive. Six or eight years ago, I actually used to say that Bitcoin suffered from a lack of regulation. And, you know, some libertarians would be uh, bristling at that comment, but I, I meant it even in their spirit. There's a certain amount of regulation that's going to make them more successful, right? Like if you want Bitcoin to take over the world, there is some regulation you need. And in most countries, it's pretty well resolved, uh, like in the US, which I know the best, most of the regulatory bodies ruled even seven years ago, the IRS ruled in 2013, Treasury ruled in 2013. 
the CFTC has been very supportive of Bitcoin and we've had uh, futures on the CME for three years. So most of the agencies that have ruled, recently the OCC allowed any nationally chartered bank to custody crypto, it's a huge announcement. You know, most have been very positive. And then I think the, the big issue in the regulatory space is China is said it's game on. They're building their own blockchain. I think that really puts the clock ticking for all regulators to address blockchain. The U.S. Federal Reserve just uh, began a project in the Boston Fed to work with MIT on a U.S. central bank digital currency. And I think all major uh, countries are going to have to have a digital currency strategy. I think there's going to be a single digit number of very important blockchains in the long, long run. Uh, so we are invested in Bitcoin and, e and XRP. And at various times, we change our views and, and Bitcoin we thought would do well in the kind of aftermath of the pandemic's economic shock. And partly it's just, you know, Bitcoin's the mega cap, you know, it, it can't go up and down as much as the tiny little small caps do. Uh, and I think we're in a massive bull market. So the smaller cap things have high beta, they're going to outperform. Bitcoin's 62% of the market cap right now, got up to just below 70. Uh, and a few years ago, it was down to 32. So um, a quick kind of metric would be, I think Bitcoin dominance would drift down uh, by Bitcoin going up and everything else going up a lot more. XRP is fueling the cross-border money movement that we had, you know, everybody in the industry has been talking about for a long time. Uh, currently, blockchain-enabled cross-border money movement for here from the United States to Mexico is uh, getting close to 10% of all of that very important $25 billion remittance corridor. So that's a huge success for our industry, that, uh, a use case that, that's really making people's lives better. And if you think about remittance, um, you know, for those of us in finance, the average remittance cost is 9%, and you know, it's just a number, whatever, it's 900 basis points. But for the migrant, that's a month's wages, right? The migrant has to work for an entire month just to pay their, their remittance company. So if you can send it, you know, with uh, crypto directly, it's almost free. If you have to, you know, pay an agent, um, you know, like Pixo or somebody like that, it's a percent or two, but it's still, you know, it's already changing people's lives. And obviously the most important thing in, in uh, Ethereum is E2.0 going live, uh, going away from proof of work, which is, you know, uh, wasteful, obviously, to proof of stake to allow, you know, a much more efficient system. The investment in ICOs and, and protocols uh, had slowed down dramatically after the pandemic. We've done a couple deals in October and November, so there's a few ICOs that are interesting. And then for that fund in particular, there's a lot of deals like Filecoin and Polkadot that we've been invested in for many years that have just gone live, just started trading. Uh, so that's added, a, you know, it's, it's good to see the, the fruits of all these years of investment. So I think there's a misunderstanding about uh, ICOs and that they were invented in 2017. And the reality is they were, uh, they began in 2013. They were just very rare. My partner, Joey Krug, did Augur in 2015. You know, so there's two or three important protocols coming out each year. At the height of the boom in 2017, there was 50 coming out each week. And obviously that's not sustainable or natural. And so that's gone away. But we've gone back to what it used to be is there are a couple uh, each year that are very important that we're investing in. And the way you evaluate it is pretty similar to venture. <clears throat> so you have to go through all the kind of same things you would with a early stage venture protocol. Uh, and obviously they're very tech heavy. So um, it's, it's nice to have our co-CIO having started a, a protocol. But the, the big difference is you need a community. And it's, it really is different than, uh, you know, building some, you know, venture back company that builds some cool widget. If the widget works better than somebody else's thing and it's cheaper, it's going to sell. Whereas here, you know, open source protocols, you need to get, you need to motivate a community uh, to, to create it and developers to build apps on it. So that would be the only kind of extra dimension that we're evaluating protocols on is whether the founding team is likely to be able to build a community that becomes self-sustaining and, and lets the project grow. Hard to say, but if I had to pick one, I actually pick Polkadot. It's, uh, about 10% of the value of Ethereum, and I think it's more than 10% chance that it's uh, you know, a very viable competitor. All cryptocurrencies can go up a ton, but if you you know, if you want to paper trade this and have a call a year from now and check in, I'll go with Polkadot.